Hi and welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey and today I've decided that I wanted to dissect this claim that is often made that nandrolone is 11 times more toxic than testosterone to the endothelial cells. And uh, to those who don't know, endothelial cells pretty much make up blood vessel, uh, the lining of the blood vessels. Um, so I decided to get this study which is called um, Detrimental Effects of Anabolic Steroids on Human Endothelial Cells. I purchased it. Um, and so I went over it in detail and I'm going to share with you some of the results and why I think it's a it's not the best study nor are the the points represented um, correctly. So firstly it's an in vitro study which again I always thought when people made these claims especially YouTubers that Nandrolone is so toxic to the uh, lining of the blood vessels. Uh, I mean, I thought they were biopsies of people using Nandrolone as compared to testosterone, but that isn't the case. So essentially what happened is they took um, endothelial cells from the human umbilical vein and they just directly inoculated it or put it, uh, the drugs in the growth medium, which included testosterone, nandrolone, also known as DECA, androstenedione, the other, those and other ones, but we'll focus on uh, testosterone and nandrolone. Um, so whilst I don't really like the method in which they use, which includes direct inoculation because that doesn't really re represent how it happens in the human body. It's not directly inoculated. Um, this is again how they test antibiotics and things like that to see if they're bactericidal. So they looked at three variables to see if it caused damage. Um, they looked at whether it stops per per uh, proliferation of the cells, so like growth um, they looked at it if, if it caused apoptosis, which is like killing the cell, essentially, and intracellular concentration of calcium. Uh, so why calcium was measured is because it's thought that calcification of the vessels leads to heart disease. So again, uh, I have an issue with why they tested the proliferation ability because um, this is essentially seeing whether or not these drugs prevent angiogenesis or well, maybe I'm uh, interpreting it wrong and angiogenesis in already established blood cells is not um, it's not useful because uh, uh, or and angiogenesis is commonly seen in atherosclerotic disease anyway when uh, new vascular for micro of microvessels in the heart are made. So it doesn't really tell you if the damage, if there's damage or not. It just tells you it prevents the proliferation of these cells. But anyway, um. So, also, they didn't mention what they used in the study. They just said testosterone and nandrolone. They didn't mention if it was pure testosterone crystals or um, if it was dissolved or, you know, they took Pfizer oil and used that in the uh, Pfizer testosterone cypionate and used that as the growth medium for these cells, which would be a, a, a bad choice. And I assume they didn't because that uh, the solvents in themselves are apoptotic and dangerous. So what they used uh, to measure whether or not, this was like the main part of the study, which isn't even a good indicator. It's again, the cell proliferation. I don't know why that was so important, but they measured the IC50, which is the inhibitory concentration that causes 50% of the cells to uh, no longer grow essentially so it's half the maximal inhibitory concentration and it's a measure of potency of a substance inhi in inhibited 
inhibiting a specific biological or biochemical function. So they looked at how much and, uh, of each drug was needed to prevent 50% uh, from growing. So they used the concentration uh, unit they used was uh, micromol uh, micromolars or micromoles per liter. And so they cultured these cells for 72 hours and compared varying doses of each to see which caused, how much was needed to cause 50% um, inhibition. Um, so uh, as you'll see in the results here, I'll show you them on the screen. Uh, Nandrolone only needed nine. Um, micromoles per liter to inhibit um, uh, for its IC50 and testosterone needed a hundred and again um, here are two other graphs but I'll get back to them later to prove a point. Um, so this shows that nandrolone prevents 50% growth at, uh, or 50% of the cells from growing at a dose 11 times lower since nandrolone was nine micromoles Per liter and testosterone was a hundred. So that's where that stat is pulled off from. But remember there are two other things that they, other variables they looked at and uh, a prevention of apopto, I mean proliferation isn't the best measure to say oh it's toxic. Um, there are other measures that should be looked at before claiming that but as you'll see, a lot of people will just look at one factor and use the scariest stat to prove something. But if you look at these graphs, you'll see that it uh, the nandrolone tapers off slowly, and so does the testosterone. Well, the testosterone even uh, less so. So there's a dramatic drop in proliferation for nandrolone, and then it tapers slowly. So if we compare the hundred micromoles per liter of nandrolone compared to the testosterone. The nandrolone, if you look here, if we draw a line, it'll show that it prevents 40% proliferation, whereas the testosterone will prevent 50% proliferation. So again, it's not linear, it's a hyperparabola, you know, the, those graphs. Um, so does that, and it doesn't mean it's more toxic, um, not really, it just prevents proliferation of 50% at that dose, where if we compare 40%, it would be twice as toxic, let's say. But anyway, as I said, it's a poor measure. So a good one might be apoptosis, which is the death of the cell, which in, in someone who was living is quite serious because you don't want your the cell lining to be destroyed. And in this case, when they compared the doses of the IC50, testosterone induced 31 apoptosis while nandrolone did 18%. You don't see that statistic shown elsewhere, uh, anywhere. But remember, the IC50 of testosterone is much higher than that of nandrolone, but still, it would be incorrect to assume that the relationship between the dose is linear, as we saw it wasn't lin linear, it was hyperparallel. I can't say that word, but yeah, you'll, uh, I'll show up some graphs. So let's look at the last measurement, which was the intracellular calcium. Um, and uh, as I said, Intracellular calcium was measured because calcification is thought as one of the ways in which atherosclerosis occurs um, and how vessels age and become constricted. But as you see, there's not much uh, change. And in comparison to the control, which is the top one, there isn't much difference. Or uh, the issue, uh, there is a difference, but when comparing nandrolone and testosterone, you'll see nandrolone is lower again, but again because the dose of they use the IC50 dose, which is again another criticism of this paper. So there are many issues with this paper, 
And if we look at varying points, you could say that nandrolone isn't that less toxic than testosterone, but I wouldn't even say this paper proves that they are toxic, because it's not an in vivo study, it's in vitro. Um, I'm not supporting the use of one over the other, I'm just analyzing the data that is commonly spewed out that nandrolone is 11 times more toxic to the lining, which isn't necessarily true. And if the people doing the study had shown the graphs in full, like the apoptosis with every dose, as opposed to just the IC50, then perhaps we'd have a clearer picture, but again, it's a poor study and people aren't really representing it correctly. Um, so the take home from this is both are do have some damage to the endothelial lining and whilst the IC50 of testosterone is only a, is 11 times higher than that of nandrolone, it doesn't necessarily mean it's nandrolone's 11 times more toxic. Um, so, I, 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 I'll link the study below and I implore you to read it and come up with your own conclusions and not to take things mentioned on forums or, you know, taken as common fact in the steroid community as common fact and actually look into these studies and see whether or not they are in fact representing the data in full. Uh, so thank you for watching the video, uh, please subscribe, like, or follow me on Instagram, I'd very much appreciate that, and I'll see you in the next video.